If you're uh, thinking about doing a uh, 327 uh, ratio conversion to your uh, W113 car, uh, the 108 chassis 4.5 would be the correct car to use. Uh, it's the only car they use that uh, particular ratio in. Um, you can use either that SE or the SEL. Uh, the one, the only difference there is the long wheelbase. They all have the 327 rear end. Um, uh, but it is a 108 chassis and it's the V8 uh, the 4.5. Uh, you don't want to pick a car with air suspension because they have a different rear axle and it's not interchangeable. So you want to be careful not to get a 300 series automobile. Uh, now this car is missing the 4.5 badge, but normally it'll have a 4.5 badge right here. And it'll be a 280 SE or 280 SEL. This particular car was bought for a donor, uh, fairly reasonable, but uh, I couldn't quite get myself to uh, part it out, so it may get fixed, but uh, this is the model you're looking for. Uh, these V8 differentials have a problem. The V8 engine has so much more torque, uh, even though it is a, a bigger ring and pinion gear, the uh, yoke assembly with the pin uh, will actually wear. So you'll have way too much slop in the unit. Now here I have one wheel jacked off the ground, the other wheel on the ground, and the drive shaft's not moving, so all this play is in the differential. And, and the rear end's not whining, so I don't think it's gear wear. Uh. See the drive shaft? Yeah. If the drive shaft's not moving and you got uh, a slop like that, yeah, you have wear. That's only about three quarters of an inch, yeah. Yeah, there's a spec in the manual for this. When you put the wheel on, it's even a lot more. Oh, so it is too much. Yeah, yeah. What you're going to find is when you open up the differential, the, the, the casting will be worn around the yoke assembly. So. This is the yoke and spider gear assembly off the standard axle, which would be on the 113 and the other ratio 108 sedans of the era. And this is a larger, heavier duty uh, yoke assembly and spider gears off the 4.5 rear end. Now that part of the casting that actually wears is around the pin here. Uh, so what you're seeing when I, uh, on the car over there is uh, actually a spin moving back and forth in the casting. It's worn probably quite a bit more than this one. Uh, so this would not be a good donor car. It's something that should be checked before you uh, uh, purchase a rear end and, uh, and put it in your car. These can be repaired, uh, but that's something you have to consider. Uh, normally the quick fix is uh, uh, v it out and find someone that's good at welding uh, castings and just weld it in solid. Uh, the correct way may be to take it all apart and machine it out, weld it up, but that would be an expensive This is where you're going to find the gear ratio on this rear axle. So it's stamped in this little flange right here. Before you go to take, make an all, go, before you go to all the trouble of taking this out, you'll want to check the ratio to make sure it's the one you have because some, somewhere along the line someone may change a rear axle. Uh, normally this rear axle has a hydro pneumatic compensator shock, uh, but it's been replaced by a spring like you're going to have on your 113. Bolts right over directly, it's no problem. Change the bracket, the spring, and the rubber parts. Check the ratio. We already checked the slop in the yoke assembly and found out this one was bad. Um, the other thing that you're going to, the, the physically, the pumpkin on the V8 is a little bit bigger. Uh, the yoke and assembly and everything inside is a little bigger. It's got this cooling tube. Uh, the cooling tube will have to be removed when you install the axle in the 113 car. The cooling tube on the uh, V8 rear end, it's got a bigger uh, pumpkin, a bigger gear set, uh, and it uh, circulates a little bit of fluid through there uh, uh, for the, uh, basically for the torque and extra power coming off of that V8. On your 113 car, you won't need this. Uh, we'll remove this. 
and uh, I put a fitting in to block off uh, where this tube was. Okay. Uh, this is your 113 rear axle. The parts you need to save off of this are your emergency brake cables, both sides, uh, your rear crossover spring, the bracket that holds the spring in place, and all the rubber parts. <coughs> There's some springs and pivots and, and uh, different things uh, that you got to unhook to get this off before you can unhook the emergency brake unit. Mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, that's it. Everything else is a direct changeover. So, uh, normally when you put one of these axles in the car, before you, you normally just don't change everything over and put it in the car. You're going to tear it down, put new rubber bushings in, check the yoke assembly visually and uh, freshen up some other things, maybe paint it up, clean it, put bearing seals in it, put it back Two. up in there. There's a couple rubber brake hoses there that you almost always want to replace unless they've been replaced in recent history. Uh, front pinion seal, common source of minor leak. You see a spot back there when you park your car. Those are all things you know you should probably change when you're, when you're uh, have the unit out. Front pinion seal, wheel seals, uh, probably the bearings, uh, the rubber mounting bushing right here, uh, the trunk mount up inside the car, uh, all things that aren't real expensive. It's uh, really improve the ride quality of the car, the, the rubber uh, spring pads top and bottom, and the, the rubber mount uh, on each side of the trailing arms. All things that uh, think about changing when you're uh, uh, changing changing it over. What about that axle boot, that rubber boot on? Uh, yeah, and that's the most important thing, uh, the rubber axle boot right here. A lot of times the boot will still be good, but the uh, uh, the clamps will get so old that they'll break and uh, so old that they'll break and uh, like that. And and they make a uh, split boot. It's uh, uh, doesn't work as well. It's uh, like a temporary repair most people feel, but uh, uh, the solid boot is the best solution, but it's a lot of work. But uh, basically a pretty straightforward job. Essentially, uh, that's it. Everything else is a direct changeover.